like to welcome you to this edition of EMU Today TV. And I'm your host, Mark L. Sui. And we have a great show lined up. We're going to be fo focusing on the College of Business today. Some great news is happening over the College of Business. So I want you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the conversation. I'm so pleased to have uh, Dean Kenneth Lohr. And uh, Ken Lohr is the Dean for the College of Business. And we're going to talk about a very nice gift given to the College of Business. Dean Lohr, thank you for joining me. How are you doing? Doing very well, Mark. Thank you for having me. It's so good to have you. And how long, by the way, have you now been the dean at the College of Business? This is year four. I can't believe that. Year four. And you came from the West Coast, I believe. Is that right? Yes. I was dean at uh, Cal State Northridge before coming here. Okay. So let's just jump right into the conversation. I know a lot of good things that are happening over the College of Business. And we'll come back and unpack a couple other things a bit later. But recently, there was a million dollar gift uh, gifted to the university, to the College of Business specifically, I think uh, it caught my attention when I saw the news. I'm sure it caught your attention. Talk to the viewers about this $1 million gift. Who was it from and how did all that come together? Okay, million dollar gift, gift commitment is from uh, Mr. Stephen J. Klotz. Uh, Steve is the CEO of the Heisinger Group in Grand Rapids. He is uh, an Eastern alumnus. He is a member of our executive advisory board. <clears throat> and uh, Steve has been uh, an incredible supporter of our, um, our Center for Financial Learning that houses the, our Bloomberg terminals and other state-of-the-art technologies for financial analytics that benefit our students, that benefit our faculty. Um, Steve, I think probably the very first alumnus that I met when I came here four years ago um, was Steve. Uh, sat in his office and he just uh, extolled his enthusiasm for the college, for, uh, for Eastern, for what it had done for his career, and his desire to give back. And you know, within minutes, he had offered a very generous gift to support mm -hmm. this initiative as I laid out to him that this is something that we had brought on board at the last couple of institutions where I've worked, that our major competitors in the area have, and that can make such a huge difference for our students in terms of their career readiness and uh, their marketability in the marketplace and in job interviews. And uh, he jumped in with a commitment then and very recently, has expanded that to this $1 million commitment to help us sustain this in, per in perpetuity and to give his name to that center. Is this a record for the College of the Business, by the way? This is, is this ties a record. Okay. Um, we, this is not the only $1 million gift that we've received, but this is uh, one of very few. And, 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 uh, so this this is really exciting news for us, for our students, and for, for our future. Absolutely. And, and let's talk about his commitment to the university. So what you said he extolled the virtues of, of EMU. And, and what really, you know, what, what 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 did he really hone in on in terms of, of why he wanted to give the gift to the university, to the College of Business specifically? Was it the, the folks of the academics? Was it because of we have some of the hardest working students that uh, probably in the state of Michigan, if not beyond. I mean, what were some of the things that this really just triggered him to, to make him feel compelled to do this or to want to do this? Well, uh, <clears throat> you know, I'm having a hard time remembering the details of that conversation from four years ago because we've been in regular communication yeah. over time since then. So I'll, I'll try to just capture the flavor of some of the conversations we've had over the years. Um, Steve is... Uh, is firmly committed to the uh, to the career growth, the opportunities for our students. Um, he came in on campus just recently and uh, met with some of the students who were in the lab working on the Bloomberg terminals. Uh, just as gracious as he could be, as interested in their in their opportunities and in their professional development. Um, and and this is been something that's a driver for him as far as I can as far as I can tell. Um, he uh, he has spoken about the difference that his Eastern education made for him in his career. Um, and and he wants to see those opportunities passed on. He wants to see us able to deliver them 
uh, really with the same, uh, to create the same opportunities for them that yeah. exist among some of our leading competitors. Uh, and that's been uh, a little bit of a resource constraint in times past. And Steve has now opened the doors for us. And we, uh, in the time since we brought in the Bloomberg terminals, for instance, we have had hundreds of students who have become uh, Bloomberg certified, which makes a big difference for them in the marketplace. When they mm -hmm. Job interviews. We've uh, both in terms of being able to uh, come to the table with a prospective employer uh, with that knowledge and background, that skill set, uh, and and being able to to talk about what they've achieved. And we we have, for instance, a student managed uh, uh, investment fund uh, where students are using Bloomberg's to do to an analyze different equities. Uh, they've just become, they've been doing this for two, three years now, and every year they just get more and more sophisticated. Uh, they're guided by a team of, of top professionals um, who, uh, who never cease to impress me with the, uh, the insight, both the insights that they're able to share with the students and the extent to which they're impressed by the, uh, the caliber of students that we have and uh, the analyses that they perform mm -hmm. uh, in carrying out this task. And all of that is, is facilitated by this technology that Steve's gift plays such a big role in enabling us to, to acquire and to maintain. Yeah, and, I, and you, just, you just alluded to, uh, you know, how the gift will be used, and you said with the technology and things like that. And it's got to make you feel good too, because here we are in these challenging times, and everyone, you know, everyone's kind of being challenged in terms of getting resources to have a distinguished alum come back and get back to the university. It's also a wonderful sign that the direction that we're going in as an institution is has given him a level of confidence for him to be able to do this as well. Right, right. Uh, we're. Uh... Uh, one of our faculty members, uh, Dr. Karen Ann Craig, who has uh, worked very closely with this resource, um, has assembled annually a report of how it's being used, and the results are just really impressive. Yes. Multiple fa faculty publications of uh, sophisticated analysis using data that is, is available to us only, only because of this in addition to the outstanding uh, opportunities for student development. Uh, so we're, uh, we're deeply grateful. Absolutely. And I know I want to segue diff uh, briefly into a couple of minutes remaining. Um, the College of Business is doing very well in terms of, of, of being recognized. I think the, uh, the Princeton Review continues to rate the College of Business very highly. Talk to us about a couple of the other distinguishable facts for the College of Business that you have a chance to brag a little bit. Well, thank you. I was hoping you'd ask that, Mark. Uh, <laughs> I, I was delighted to learn just really within the last month, <clears throat> for this is one example. We've been named Fortune's best part-time MBA programs for 2022. This is a prestigious ranking. If you think about the name Fortune, you think about uh, how important recognition is in the corporate world uh, by fortune. We are one of only two universities in the state of Michigan to, to have achieved this recognition. Our uh, Master of Science in uh, human, resource, human Resource Management and Organizational Development and our undergraduate program in Human Resource Management were both recognized this last year by HR.com in their annual lead awards as the number one undergraduate and graduate programs in human resource management in the country. Outstanding. Our, um, our, and we have multiple other disciplines. Just, again, just within the last month, our um, integrated marketing communications, master of science degree in that discipline uh, has been recognized by US News and World Report as among the best non-MBA, um, graduate business programs in the nation for a number of years that went up in the rankings this year. Um, we have our, uh, we've been named one of the top uh, entrepreneurship schools in the nation. But we have highly nationally ranked programs in supply chain management. And we all know how important 
how critical that discipline has become, especially over the course of this pandemic. Um, and so we're able to bring students uh, the state-of-the-art training in that area, uh, like um, among the very best in the nation. Our taxation program, our international business program, um, I could go on and on, but uh, yeah. we're, ju we're just excited about the rapidly growing numbers of rankings that are coming to our programs. Uh, yeah. and, and also the achievements of our alumni. Students graduate and they go on and do phenomenal things. Um, maybe I can just highlight a couple of those. Just again, it's very about, recent. About, about, about 30 seconds. Okay, good. Just within the last month, um, we've had an alumna appointed CEO of Michigan Nonprofit Association, uh, Grace Lee, President CEO of CEO of Ashford, Ashford uh, Comex LLC, mm -hmm. was named Ukraine's 2021 list of 100 most influential women. Uh, meanwhile, another alumnus you might know something about, uh, uh, Mr. Mark Lee, uh, is just all over the place, uh, <laughs> sharing his expertise on, on small business management, on entrepreneurship, on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, and so I, I couldn't be more thrilled with the recognition that's coming to our college, to our alumni, and the great achievements our students are having. Well, Dean Kim Thuor, congratulations. We thank you for your time. Keep up the great work. Let's keep moving this great college of business ahead. And we applaud you for all of your efforts as well. Thank you very much. And thanks for joining me today. Thank you so much, Mark. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure as well. When you want to sit back, what we want to do is to show you a brief video and it says focusing on scheduling a tour of our great campus here at East Service University. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the entrepreneurial program that the Dean just referenced. We'll be right back. Welcome to Eastern. My name is Corinne and I'm a tour guide here at EMU. Eastern Michigan University is located right here in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Ypsilanti is full of a rich history that has created a unique and strong sense of community for hundreds of years. Welcome to our Student Center. Here we have many resources to help all students find success here at EMU. From our admissions office to financial aid to our diversity and community involvement offices, we offer support for everyone. Whether it's a quick bite between classes or grabbing lunch with friends, there is something for everyone. There are always tons of events happening on campus, and the Student Center is the hub. We have two art galleries, an auditorium with free Friday night movies, a ballroom that holds large events such as career fairs, and a temporary ice skating rink. The students that you will meet on campus are from many different backgrounds. Because of the true EMU global rate, students from all over the country and the globe attend EMU without paying any out-of-state or non-resident fees. As one of the most diverse campuses in Michigan, EMU takes pride in celebrating each individual student and the experiences they bring. At the library, we have many resources that will be helpful to you as a student here at EMU. We have study rooms, multiple computer labs, a writing center, a research center, and much more. The library is huge, four floors in fact, and has so many options to accommodate however you like to study. Eastern was founded in 1849 as the first normal school outside of the original 13 colony. To this day, Eastern has the stellar reputation for making well-rounded educators that are prepared to excel in their fields. Our programs are focused on teaching practical skills and putting students into classroom settings. If you're looking for an enhanced academic experience, join us here at the EMU Honors College. We offer exclusive advising, priority registration for classes, scholarships, access to the honors residence halls, and classes capped at 25 students taught by professors who are the best in their field. Welcome to the Science Complex, which is made up of Mark Jefferson and the newly renovated Strong Hall, which I'm standing in right now. It holds many different types of classes for the wide variety of natural sciences we offer. The Science Complex has an abundance of environments to enhance your learning, including classrooms, labs, lecture halls, a planetarium, greenhouse, and an observatory deck complete with telescopes. Our programs not only allow students to learn in the classroom, but also give them the opportunity to learn by conducting their own research and getting hands-on experience through fieldwork. Our newly renovated Rec IM is a great space for students wanting to be active or looking for something fun to do with friends. 
Inside, we have both a club and Olympic sized pool, cardio rooms, weight rooms, workout classes, an indoor track, volleyball and basketball courts, as well as a club and intramural sports teams. The eateries are my favorite spot to grab a meal, and it's only a three minute walk from the student center. It's right in the middle of four residence halls, and it has so many incredible food options and cool places to meet up with friends. Here's Wise, one of our nine residence halls. I like living on campus because it's so convenient for getting to work, going to downtown Ypsilanti, or taking a quick nap in between classes. It encourages me to get involved on campus, study at the library more often, and meet new, lifelong friends. There's also Wi-Fi, kitchenettes, and student lounges to study and hang out in. Eastern is in the heart of Ypsilanti. Ipsy has a depot town and a downtown with great places to eat, a vibrant arts community, and plenty of stores. Not only is it a great place to explore with friends, our vision office is dedicated to connecting students with volunteer service opportunities and making Eagles an impactful part of the Ypsilanti community. With over 200 majors, five different academic colleges, and over 200 different student organizations, EMU has something for everyone. Are you a future Eagle? Apply today. Welcome back to EMU Today TV. I hope you had the opportunity of enjoying that video, those virtual tours of the great institution known as Eastern Michigan University. We're going to continue the conversation and really talk about a, a, a new, a relatively new program that was just launched recently. I'm so pleased to have uh, joined me, Mr. Sanjeev Chaudhary. He's the director of the EMU Center for Entrepreneurship and a professor in entrepreneurship as well. And we're going to spend some time chatting about the new executive certificate program and entrepreneurship. Sanjeev, thanks for joining me. How are you doing? Thank you. Thank you for having me. And I'm excited to talk about this program. All right, let's just jump right into the conversation. We know that entrepreneurship across our region has continue, it continues to expand. And Eastern Michigan is taking a leadership position under your direction, if you will. Talk to us about this new program. First of all, let's talk about the Center for Entrepreneurship. Let's start at the Center for Entrepreneurship. Exactly what is it? And then we'll segue into the new program. Sure. Uh, Center for Entrepreneurship at the Eastern Michigan University. Uh, I've been there for quite a long time. Uh, you know, uh, I came to the Eastern Michigan University in 2001, and the center came a few years before that. So it's been there for a long time, and mainly we were focused on our students, creating entrepreneurial spirit in them, and uh, creating co-curricular activities, and then we created a... Um, you know, comprehensive academic program that has a undergraduate uh, entrepreneurship major, entrepreneurship minors for students from outside the College of Business. Then we have a graduate program where MBA students can concentrate in entrepreneurship. And there is a graduate certificate program for uh, people with without College of Business degree. So we have a comprehensive academic program. Then we also have some co-curricular program like several different competitions elevator pitch competition, business plan competitions. These are competitions for our students and students from our community. Even we have a competition for high school students in our state. So that's been our kind of focus, but we kind of branched out a little bit uh, to 
uh, reach out to the community. We are offering programs to the community businesses through our student projects. We have a project called Field Studies in Entrepreneurship where mm -hmm. senior students go out there and work with our community business owners to help out with their problems. So that's how we started now. So coming out to this new program that we're talking about today, this program is called Executive Certificate in Entrepreneurship and Venture Challenge. This program has been in works for a long time. I, um, you know, we started thinking about this program in early 2018, and we have reached out to so many folks, um, our alum, the different alum groups saying, you know, there are groups of alumni, and then there are individuals, and then community partners. Community, yeah. as you know, Mark, there are so many people who are trying to help entrepreneurship in our state right. and in our region. So I went out there and spoke with all of those that I could speak with. And this happened because of everybody's help. Um, so I can go on and on. <laughs> Well, I'm going to jump in for a second and kind of help to guide the conversation as well. And I want to circle back and make sure people understand the value and the role of entrepreneurship and the importance of it. We know that uh, you know entrepreneurs have created 60 to 70 percent of the net new jobs over a 10-year window, uh, and that's according to the Small Business Administration. And a lot of times we think that it's the large businesses creating the jobs, and we, and we appreciate that. We want, to, we want to make sure we love our big businesses, but entrepreneurs continue to become the backbone of this economy. And as we were preparing for this conversation, Sanjeev, I noticed that uh, this, this program that you have, the, you're launching the new executive certificate program in entrepreneurship. And talk about that program, because I think that there are awards being, uh, you're providing awards for those completing this program or a chance to win, I think, with up to $25,000, I believe. Yeah, yeah. To begin with, you know, that we, we did, before we started this, we did a little bit of research to see, you know, there are so many different kinds of entrepreneurs who are getting help, who are not getting much help. You know, everybody's helping. So in our mm -hmm. research, we found out that, you know, those entrepreneurs who has an idea and working hard on their idea, but did not start selling yet. You know, pre-sales, they are having a hard time with help. Mm. You, know, you know, people are not investing on any money on them. And once you get a little bit of traction, that's where you get more help. So that's what we were trying to focus on those folks. Who has a really good idea? The idea is scalable, growth-oriented, but have not started yet and having hard time getting, you know, some kind of investment at that time. They, they are the ones who are getting hard time. Back. So we thought, you know, why don't we kind of have a program where we will offer innovative, unique training program, and also we'll add a venture challenge. The idea is ultimately we want a few of them really start their venture. You know, ideas are a lot. But ideas, from ideas to the startup, a lot of people, a lot of folks go down, they don't start. So yeah. we want to put our energy so that we can convert a few from idea to a startup. And there we come with this program. And, and we know that access to capital, according to many surveys, is the number one challenge for entrepreneurs, whether it's starting a business or whether to look to expand their business, we know that access to capital certainly is, is, is a challenge. And for them to go through a program like this and get the certificate provides them, and according to the venture challenge that the university is providing, it provides them with an opportunity to help to alleviate, if you will, some of that access to capital concern. Right, right. So, so now let's go into that. What we have it, you know, the program, um, offer some uh, capital to start, uh, but the program has more than that. We, we have so many folks that are helping with this program as mentors. You know, we, we have, for this program, this program already started, uh, Mark. We, we uh, you know, have started this program. The first uh, meeting was uh, January 8th, 
-hmm. And uh, this program, let's let's talk about this program a bit. This program has eight week, um, and the eighth week is a venture challenge where the winner of the venture challenge will receive twenty five thousand dollars as expense money for their venture. So it's not like a check that we give it to them, but it is the money goes to their venture. What, one of the things we are asking them to do while they're going through this training program is uh, create uh, an expense for next six months that they will be spending $25,000. So they should have already in their mind how they're going to spend that money for their venture. And we, we will help them out with that. You know, what is a good way to spend this money? And, and we will give them money to spend on their venture. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that way we are kind of focusing towards their startup, not them. So basically, them. basically, you know, how are we going to spend $25,000, expense $25,000 to support your business or your business exactly. idea? Absolutely. And, and as we talk about participants, you said the program kicked off back in January. How, how many people are participating in this particular program to date? So we have received 60 applications for this program. Uh, and we admitted 16 out of the mm. six, 60. We admitted 16. Uh, and uh, right now, this is last Saturday was the sixth uh, sixth week. Our fifth week ended. And we are on the sixth week right now. Oh. So the program offers uh, like, you know, people come with ideas, right? We, we have each module, they go through different training programs. First module, they have looked at their own idea, evaluated their ideas uh, with a faculty, with expert from industry. So it's a unique mix of faculty, industry experts, entrepreneurs, and business service providers. All of them are giving them training. So it's not like one kind. We are kind of 360 degree approach. Like, <laughs> you know, somebody went through the same thing and is successfully is there, you know, you have to get some help from community uh, from say SBDC, Small Business Development Center. SBDC is there. Help. Mm -hmm. You, you mm -hmm. have to go through some training, how to pitch. NEF, New Enterprise Forum is there. So we have covered every aspect in this program. So if you go through the program, you, have, you don't have to go each of those organizations. They are coming to you, you know? And, and then ultimately you pitch who do you pitch? We have brought in seven judges. And many of those judges, they're the, you know, I would say leaders of pre-seed funding. Mm -hmm. So we brought in pre-seed funding and people don't get a chance to go in front of them and pitch. You know, even if you have good ideas, they're not going to take you. But here, for being a part of this program, you get a chance to speak to multiple of them. Okay. You know, they're sitting there as judges. Yeah. So this is a unique program. I'm very excited, Mark, as Absolutely. you can see. And, and <laughs> I, I have, can't stop. I, I, you know, I have 30 seconds remaining in that sense. So just briefly, uh, any plans to replicate this and do it again later this year? Definitely. Definitely. So yeah. Definitely. We are for sure, 100%, we're going again in, in late September. Um, that is, uh, we have the funding for that. We are going yeah. for it. And I will need your help to get the word out again. <laughs> and thank well, you, Mark, for helping us. Thank you, Sanjeev. We appreciate you joining us uh, for this discussion, a very important discussion about entrepreneurship. You can see what Eastern Michigan University is doing. If you have interest in getting more information, we have the website at the bottom of the screen. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank you all for tuning in this month for EMU Today TV. And we will check you out next month for the latest happenings around the great University of Eastern Michigan University. Go out, make it a great day, make it a great week, and a great month.